Excellent. Okay. <laughs> hi, Amelia. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Marie. Hi, Allison. Bean, you're here. Hello. Welcome. Okay. Hi, everyone. So if you haven't met me before, hello, my name is Caitlin Diana. I am the crazy lady that admins this group and runs the accelerator. And this is Colby Barrett from Sloth Soul Astrology. Um, we met probably like two and a half, three months ago now. Colby did an astrology reading for me. I saw him posting for a while and I was like, huh, this guy's got an interesting vibe. And when I was reading all of his stuff, I was like, he doesn't look at astrology the same way other people do. Like I could see him writing things, but then he would interject the word fuck. And I was like, that's my guy. I need to go talk to this one because he doesn't take life so seriously. And so we had a great time. We did a reading. It turned into this like huge existential conversation. And well, here we are. So this is our second time going live together. And um, my hope is today that we're going to share a little bit about what's energetically going on right now why people are feeling so much pressure, what this crazy full moon is doing. Like, guys, I got a call home from my son's teacher today. <laughs> That's what I was doing and why we were late. Um, so we're going to talk about that full moon. And then we're going to talk about a subject that I know is oh, contentious for us, but people are really wanting to know about it, which is this whole thing about starseed indicators in our astrological natal charts. So that's where we're going, what we're going to do. All right, good. Um, Violet's like, it's definitely is magic. Good. Okay, Lisa's here. Hello. Hi, Paige. Hi, Roxanne. Great. It looks like we have lots of friends joining us. I can't tell Colby how many, though. It freaks him out. All right, Colby. Thank you. <laughs> I, I won't tell you. I'll tell you afterwards. You can process afterwards. All right. Good deal. So I started feeling this full moon probably three days ago. I was... I tend to read it a couple of days ahead of the actual event. And I find for my body, this helps me prepare so that I can hold the field for what's coming. But I would really love to pick your brain because this doesn't feel like your average full moon cycle. Like, I don't know if I'm just out to lunch on this, but what I'm noticing, not only in what I experienced three days ago, but in my immediate circle, People are getting naked. They are like having to shed all of this stuff. They are freaking out about identities. Like what the holy F is going on? <laughs> Give us okay. an update. So we'll run it back to the, uh, the new moon that happened two weeks ago where it was a new moon conjunct Pluto. And um, the way that it's sort of lined up was really about getting in line with your authentic path and everything. And, being that Pluto's involved, it's kind of like the death and transformation process. So it's it's kind of like we were subconsciously setting intentions then on getting aligned with our path. But the issue is so many of us are plugged into everything in this whole, you know, kind of false reality that we live in. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of like there's certain situations that need to end so that way new ones can begin so we're sort of feeling all this pressure cooker energy that's kind of building up to that and um so now going into the full moon this is the release point basically because we have the uh full moon is in leo which is really about being fully expressing and expressing yourself your your full you know heart chakra expression essentially so we're going into that cycle and then to top that off it's the sun is conjunct jupiter so this is talking about a major expansion on that and also with it being the sun conjunct jupiter in aquarius that has a lot to do with us expanding on you know philosophy and cosmic knowledge you know oh look at this here we go and um and a lot to do with being plugged into the true community that you belong to. And I know a lot of people are feeling that right now, kind of feeling isolated, especially for those people who were born like 91, 92, that have Saturn in Aquarius, they're going through their Saturn return. So if you feel isolated as hell, and that's, you know, pertaining to when you were born, it's totally normal. And I actually have a support group for you. You can search saturn and aquarius support group on <laughs> facebook and it's there that's um, amazing yes yeah, so, because I, I knew that's what 
the common theme would be amongst all of them. It you know would, what's so funny about that, like, Colby? Um, a friend of mine, if you guys are into numerology at all, her name is Anne Perry. She's out on the East Coast of Canada. She's phenomenal. Her YouTube channel is so rich with information. So is her website. So Anne was attracting all of these master 11 numbers, like life path 11s. And life path 11s, we call it a master number, but really it's the, I need to get my poop in a group number. <laughs> and so um, she made a support group for them. So as soon as you said you have this group for all of these Saturn and Aquarius people, I was like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what they need, a place where they can all like oh, lament together for a little bit and then rise, because it's a lot to go through this. So you said something really interesting. You said that this is in Leo. You said it's all about this full expression piece. I was listening to a podcast today on my way home. I went to a float tank. That's what I was doing this morning. I was in there for 90 minutes. I managed to stay in full bore channel meditation mode for 60 of it. Then I was swimming around like a little fishy because my brain turned on. Um, but on my way home, I was listening to this podcast and the guy said something that kind of struck a chord with me. And of course, I'm going to paraphrase because I suck at memorizing things. He said, this time, at this point in the year, if we are not already aligned with who we are and what we want to do, the universe is going to conspire to allow everything to fall apart. Exactly. And I was like, oh my God, that's <laughs> like, I'm so glad that, I've already kind of, you know, you and I talked about this last time, how we just kind of got into what we were doing. It was literally, we didn't have a choice, but I'm seeing so many people unravel right now. So we have this full moon asking us to be really radiantly who we are and to shed all the stuff we were working on with that soul death. What's happening for all the people who are in resistance to that though? Like, okay. Oh. That's, that's where we come into one of the other aspects that's a major player in this moon cycle is Venus conjunct Pluto to where in Capricorn. And that has a lot to do with um, what we value and like what we're really kind of willing to compromise within ourselves. And being that Venus is conjunct Pluto, Pluto's trying to transform that and it's really not going to play games about it. So if you find so that's this is one of the really crucial things that i want to get across about this is that if you find yourself in a catastrophic situation like just try to be calm about it because it, it can happen like if there's something blocking you from where you're trying to get it's likely to get removed because pluto doesn't really fuck around um and then what's going to happen after that is after that conjunction venus is going to pass over saturn in aquarius and that'll be on the fifth and the sixth and during that little phase it can kind of be like a karmic check to see like did you learn to let go or do we have to show you again and and they they don't Saturn and Pluto do not play games like they're not easy on you and um and so with that being said though as I was saying the sun being conjunct Jupiter it, it can bring out a lot of good things but there's still like if there's stuff that's in the way it's gonna have to be removed through this process so then after Venus passes over Saturn on the new moon in Aquarius that will be hold on let me get the exact date yeah february 11th we're also going to have venus and jupiter meeting at that time so it's like if you can pass that test the weekend before whenever the situation that crumbled is likely to show back up in some form to see if you step back that's when you get hooked up the most is once venus and jupiter are conjunct that's like the ultimate abundance combo right there. And it's probably going to come more so in on as a collective of people. It's probably going to be hooking you into community. But it really just sort of how it'll play out is something I would have to see on individual charts. But on a, for a collective scale, 
that's how it's going to work for everyone in some sort of theme. You know, I was having a discussion with um, some of my decodes, I think it was my decodes level two students earlier this week about how we have to start living who we are in every single moment of our day and that we are really being asked to stop like compartmentalizing and reading between the lines of what you just said. Like I was listening to how you were talking about the pressure cooker and the lessons and then the retest and okay, you got it, move forward. To me, there is something I watch happen when a lot of people go through this awakening process where they fake it till they make it for a long time. And they fake it in a way where, you know, let's say we're in circle right now, they'll have all the right things to say. They have the memorization of all the proper terminology, like I should smudge my house and I'm gonna work on my chakras and you know, whatever it is. But then when they go back to their everyday human life, talking to their spouses, working in their workplaces, things like this, they're kind of living this duplicitous life. And something I've been picking up a thread on is that duplicity is coming to an end this year. And so all those people that are really hovering on that duality of I'm a woke folk, I'm a not woke folk, and they're not merging it and being that in every moment, I'm seeing them struggle the most. And it's like, I'm watching a lot of those people really question if they even had it in the first place. Have you been seeing that in some of the readings you've been doing or like what's coming up? Um. Yeah, I do. I see that a lot. And it's it's such a weird thing because for me personally, it's really easy for me to just sort of isolate. It's very, very easy. And I did have that experience where I was kind of like just sort of going through the motions with, you know, having a regular job and doing all this and, mm -hmm. and um, just being around people that I felt totally disconnected from. And it was like, I could go hang out with them and I could sort of feel like I'm having a good time in the moment. And then as soon as I would step away, I would kind of have this sense of like, who the hell was that guy that I was pretending to be just a minute ago? Yeah. And then I would feel even more just depressed afterward from this rebound of like the, this, you know, identity crisis that I was sort of having. Um, and I also see something else playing out where everybody tries so hard to take this this real like overly optimistic like everything is love and light sort of approach like there's there's like a sense of acknowledging the shadow without getting too engulfed in it but at the same time it's really not something we can just you know disassociate from completely um and you know when it comes to the whole thing about really being authentic uh so like okay let me just go into this whole story okay this might i feel be like you need to pull up a tea and a warm blanket okay yeah, let's this, go. This, <laughs> this might be kind of long but so i had this really cool experience whenever i first really mm -hmm. dove into astrology and I felt, started to really feel like this is a path that I'm supposed to take, but I don't really know how to do it. And I don't know if I'm ready. And I was delivering pizza at the time. So, and I'd been doing that for, for way too long. And so I go one day to work and I've had people on the side trying to get me to do readings and stuff. And I'm like, I'm really busy, you know, like I don't have time for all this. And um, so I go to work and then there's a huge Luna moth sitting on the door. Like, I mean, this thing looks like a pterodactyl, like it's huge. And so like, of course it caught my attention and I took a picture of it. It was like messing around with it. And then it was still there when I was leaving that night. So I go back the next day and this thing is still sitting on the door. And I poked it because I was like, okay, this thing has to be dead. Like, these things don't <laughs> even just chill in broad daylight. Like, it has to be dead. So I poked it, and then <laughs> it moved, and I was like, okay, it's alive. And the thing sits there for, like, two more days. And then 
I was sitting there on the last day that it was there and I was looking at it and I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Like you have one week that you can live. You're supposed to be a moth for a week and then you die and you're spending your whole life at this pizza place. What is wrong? And then I was like, oh, damn. Oh, damn. Like, that's, like, that just got real. Like, I heard him, like, it was like we communicated. He was like, who are you talking to? You've been here, like, 10 years, you know? So. You got your ass handed to you. Do you ever wonder if it was actually, like, a level of you incarnated as a moth getting your attention? I, I mean, it is. Like, it interstellar? Is yeah. Right? Essentially. Yeah. It was, like, the, the messenger that I sent myself. Right? Um. So anyways, I decided I was going to take the leap. Well, it took a while. I had the, my own personal pressure cooker. And um, so I took the leap and I just fell flat because I wasn't being authentic in the business foundation that I had. Uh, I just had that vision of uh, that scene from The Matrix where they're like, no one makes the first leap. And then he just goes into the ground. That was kind of, that was exactly yeah. how it played out. And it was that I was trying to present myself as this, you know, like super spiritual, overly optimistic astrologer. That, I did that know, too. <laughs> and it, it went nowhere. Like I failed so hard. And then I got all depressed again, of course. And I was like, I guess I just got to go back to being a human and have my whole dark night of the soul. And then eventually one day, I don't know what it was really that made me kind of like rebrand everything and redo how I presented all the work I was doing. But that was really where the shift kind of occurred and everything has been flown much better since then so authenticity has everything to do with everything you know what so. let's talk about that for a second because Colby and I have had a few moments already today in our conversation before we came live where I was like Jesus Colby you're like living my parallel life this is weird um but here's another one. So when I first started doing all of this work in fall of 2017, my videos, if you guys listened to my first ones in my very first Facebook group, were like, welcome, namaste, love, don't do it, Colby. I'm going to hold you. Don't do it. Put it down. I got you. I love you hard enough to say no. Stop it. I love you. Oh, holding. Okay. Get rid of that. Um, I, so I'm on a mission. Colby's like, Fuck. I'm on a mission to get Colby off of his vape and have him completely start downloading his driver pack. It's my goal by the end of this week. And he told me not to give him a stroke because some astrology thing that I'm like, whatever, you're fine. Um, anyways, so <laughs> <laughs> like, we're going to get you off of this. This is going to be good. So anyways, when I first started all of this work, I would get on these videos and I was, you know, trying to be something that I thought I had to be because I thought that's what mainstream metaphysics and Reiki healing and just being a healer was. Like I had this perception in my mind that everybody had to become this certain personality in this space of peace and joy and unconditional love, mother heifers. And what I realized is that when I tried to become that, I actually left my nature behind. And my nature is what allows to me to bring all of the codes through, all of the magic that I am, all of my spiciness, all of my cutthroat, like, no, you know what? That's crap. We need to truth test that. You know what? You've been lied to your entire career of what you're doing with your healing. Let's scrap it, do some forgiveness, start again. Like, I am not a soft and gentle come in like this cute little lamb and just lay my hands on people as a healer. That's not who I am. But my first videos were that. And so when I first put myself out into the world as a healer, I tried to be what I thought other people wanted me to be instead of actually coming to that table in that full intensity that I actually am. You know, even if you guys go back I like seven months, to the very first video I put in this Starseed Accelerator group, the very first live I did, go watch my energy from seven months ago compared to now. You'll see how quickly you shift. So this authenticity, I think, is going to be absolutely crucial for you guys this year. And if you can't harness it in the work you're in right now, it could be a sign. 
you know, the other thing I was really, who oh, Colby's like, oh, shit. Like, here she yeah, goes. That was, um, that, was, that was facts right there. <laughs> yeah, that needs a hashtag. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the other thing that's really, really clear at this time is that if we are not aligned with what brings us joy, with what makes us happy, with how we want to help, we need to go and move into what does. One of the really interesting things, Colby, let's talk about money. I don't know why this is coming up, but let's talk about money. One of the really interesting ideas that's coming in many of the healing and starseed communities right now is that we are going to move to a non-currency based um, collective in a very short amount of time. Now, I don't know if you have feelings about this, but in my trackings, it's not anytime soon. Doubtful that any of us are going to see it in our lifetime. How Do you have feelings on that? That's... That's sort of how I feel about it. Okay. Is yeah. that we, we will get there eventually, but that's probably not very soon. No, it's not. And so what I have been tracking, though, is that the way money and that frequency, that currency is going to change, is that it's going to start transferring and following happiness. <laughs> Isn't that such like a weird thing to say? But money follows happiness and creativity and expansion. And so I get a lot of people come to me that say, you know, well, I'm, I'm broke. I have gone through this situation. I can't afford this. I can't afford that. Like money doesn't change for me. I'm in massive amounts of debt. And I will turn around and go, are you happy? And most of them will tell me no. And I'm like, well, why aren't you leaning into what does bring you joy? You know, so I think... And let me just give you guys a port of reference. Most of you don't know me. I'm new to you. But for, well, three and a half years ago, I was in a foreclosure. I was broke and I was pretty much homeless. So something you don't know about me is that my story is one of those rise from the ashes. Phoenix, like everything had to burn down where I was for me to come into this space where I am today. I had to go and create my way forward. And you guys were giving this opportunity right now to do the same thing. Money is going to follow ingenuity this year and entrepreneurship. That's another thing. And so for all of you guys that are still really trying to climb like corporate ladders or you're still trying to be in there, things are shifting away from that model because of the shift we're in. So that'll be fun to watch as well. And Colby, I'm sure we could go like pull apart all the planets on it, but just intuitively as you're watching this come to play and even in your own business, what's happened in the last year? Oh, it's completely blown up in the last year. Like I, I've gone pretty much from stressing out every month about am I going to have something like, you know, my car get repoed or whatever, anything like that. And I, I've just been broke as hell, to be honest, until, until like here recently. It's really stepped itself up recently. And, um, How and did I you feel speak, like... Though? What happened? Because something happened. Um, I don't I feel like a lot of it just has to do with shifting my internal value first mm. was really where it came. Um, I had that point when I did the reading for you, that was, I was at a really low point and I was still, for some reason, I had this like imposter syndrome where I didn't feel like I was competent as an astrologer because I was comparing myself to people who had way more experience and they were way more um, just mathematical and technical in the readings that they would do. And they just had so much that I don't have, but I was ignoring what I had that they don't. And that's my own intuition and creative interpretation and everything. So like, just that internal shift alone is really in the, the comfort that I have going into readings now and that confidence is really what has shifted a lot for me because I mean, oh, those, <laughs> the day I did your, I was so stressed out. I had to do like 10 readings or something like in a day and it was just absolutely insane. I wasn't manifesting clients because I didn't feel good about it essentially so then i had to be like okay half price readings line up you know and then then i was incredibly overwhelmed and that's kind of what i'm dealing with now is like how much can i really take on 
and still maintain my sanity is kind of that's, that's sort point. of the like those boundaries are key i remember there was a very specific moment that day that you did my reading the very first day we actually like met had a face-to-face I remember you were saying something and your mouth was moving, but your heart wasn't coming with you. And I checked into your field and I was like, hey, Colby, what's going on here? I didn't say this out loud to you. And as I was sitting there, I'm like, oh my gosh, he doesn't think what he's saying is quite right or enough or going to change my life. Huh. That was that was it. It was I didn't feel like what I was doing had value. Is yes. essentially was was the thing that I had to really get over with internally. Do you I had to get, like what I said to you at the end of our session? I don't. So Colby was wrapping up and I asked his higher self. I asked like everything that Colby is and I asked my team I was like What does he need to hear right now to step into his brilliance? And I had already shared with him that I had a huge community. I already shared with him what I do for work. I had shared some of my channelings with him in our session together. And his team and Colby and his higher self, he's just said to me, tell me that I'm wanted. And I was like, oh "Oh, baby, you got it. So I turned around and I'm like, hey Colby, I don't know where this is coming from. But I have this hunch we're going to be working together. How would you yeah. feel about like maybe considering coming on the podcast or like doing a YouTube video, maybe, you know, down the road, being on the team, something. His, everything in Colby was just tell me that I'm wanted. And that was like two and a half months ago. It was so interesting because in that moment, like my energy field, sometimes what it does is it will come and replace Um, and give that person a hit of what they were trying to find, like in their childhood or in their life. But I felt my energy field come in and do like a course correction on a bunch of his childhood wounding. And if we go back and look at the timing of it, what happened? You're like flying now. You're so freaking witchy. You don't know what to do with yourself, right? And I don't want to say that that wasn't me who did that. Your higher self asked. You said, I just need to hear it. Somebody say it out loud, right? You're gonna make me cry. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so Lenore's like, "Can I have a hit?" <laughs> um, so yeah, you guys, it's it's one of those moments where this year, when when you get so good at seeing yourself, now you can start seeing who other people, Colby, I got you, <laughs> get back in that body. Um, when you <laughs> see who you are, you can start seeing who other people are at their core. And the more and more we start seeing that, the easier it's going to become to light everybody back up and give them that ability to start really scanning the whole frequency and knowing of who they are. And that's ultimately kind of what's coming over the course of this year as just people really choosing to step into their radiance and it's going to be so beautiful to watch and I'm not the only one who can do this you guys have probably even done this before for somebody else maybe you didn't get to follow them all the way through but you never know once you have yourself centered how many times you have lit somebody up I have one more story before I want to shift into another subject here and then um, Colby if you have anything you want to add go for it but there was a young man that worked at the local grocery store here in the town that I live in. And every time I went to the till, I am like, Jesus effing Murphy, this guy is legitimately a vampire. Like I am talking whitest skin I've ever seen, blackety blackest hair and eyebrows and eyelashes, like super dark circles, just looks like hollow. And every time I would come near him, he would never ask me how I was. Like that's standard at the grocery store checkout. They're supposed to be like, did you find everything you were looking for? How are you today? right? Like they have a speech they're supposed to follow. He would never make eye contact with me. And so the one day I'm in the checkout with him, this was probably only about a year ago, and he was again not making eye contact. And I come around and I'm like, how are you? And I catch his eye. And I looked right into his eyes and I'm like, do you recognize who you are and what you're doing to your soul right now? And he was like, bing. And all of a sudden he started talking to me about quantum physics and he was going on about all this stuff. Well, the next time I got back to the grocery store, like two weeks later, the dark circles under his eyes are gone. 
and his skin is starting to pick up color. Sometimes just recognizing them and being willing to see them and talk to them where they are relative to their experience is all the healing that person needs. Like, ah, oh, just love it. Anyways, okay. Any final thoughts before we pivot to this whole like starseed markers and charts conversation? Um, no, I think we've said enough there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, Nat Natalie's so funny. She's like, she doesn't look in your eyes. She looks into your soul. It's true though. Um, I was explaining this the other night in the live. When I look at you guys, I don't like, I see your human form, but you don't present to me in your human form. You show me what's going on behind the scenes and it makes people feel really naked when they're in my presence. Like it's really fascinating and they'll avoid me for a long time because of that. All right. So let's talk about this coveted subject about everybody wanting to go get their astrological charts read by somebody who sees starseed markers. Okay, Colby. You want me to just, just, <sighs> uh, let me just go ahead and throw this out there. Is okay. that toss it? <laughs> because what everybody seems to want, and I sort of did in the beginning too, is they want one star seed location they want that to be their identity essentially and, and that's sort of like i see that being sort of the struggle with this whole thing about being authentic it's we're still kind of looking for something outside of ourselves to identify ourselves with and you know it doesn't really work that way like if you even just think that's that's such a human concept to think that you are just like an alien in a human body and you would usually be in some other star system and you know but you incarnated here but it's quantum physics is a little bit more complicated than that like you exist there now that they, they, we're not on the same kind of scale of time or anything and if you even just start to logically think about it how when you look at stars, they're not even really there anymore because of the time that it takes for the light to get to the earth. So like, it's the whole concept in itself is, is really kind of skewed whenever you try to put too much of a logical context on it. And the reality of it is we all kind of have a blend anyways of different experiences that we've had incarnating in different realities and different species and different forms and we have those happening simultaneously right so so it doesn't really it's really not something to get so lost on you know i was i guess you could say i was fortunate because like the when i had in 2017 or 2016 i had an experience where I was told, like, I was visited by some interdimensional beings, and they told me that they were from Lyra, and that, you know, I was, like, a part of them, and that I was here for, you know, the Great Awakening process, and, of course, at the time, I just thought I was crazy, and I'm like, what do I even do? Am I supposed to just, you know, hop on Facebook and sort of you know, announce to the world, like, hey, I'm an alien, and, like, this is what's happening. This is I'm here to awaken you, folks. Like, listen to me, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, but it was sort of, like, that's when everything started falling into alignment of working with astrology to end up meeting other like-minded individuals yes. and sort of having this activation process through that. But anyway, so I say all that to say that I thought in that period of time, like I was solely identifying as a, like I'm I am Lyra like that's everything that I am but that's not really the case at all like I've had Andromeda I've had dreams about Andromeda coming up recently about like I had this dream where I saw these two portals and they said that one of them was to Andromeda and I was about to go through it but then I woke up so bummer I didn't get to go home <laughs> I didn't get to go to wherever that is I'm really but, interested, yeah. like with our conversation we had today, I want to go into a tracking session with you and I want to go up into the Asasani um, to go track that left time we were talking about because 
I'm really, I think there's another layer about the driver conversation, but anyways, so to circle back what Colby was just saying there, the, the incarnation of you as human, you wrote into a natal birth chart. You put all the information into this thing about how you wanted this lifetime to go down and to help steer you in the direction of what you were here to share and to do and how you wanted to learn and be a friend. That's what you wrote in. You wrote in whether you wanted to be a big community player or whether you wanted to be a lone wolf. You wrote in whether you wanted to be academically brilliant or whether you wanted to be like, I don't know, not. Um, you put those things in there, but they are there as a gatekeeper to help you meet the other people that have information to those initial problems. So the, the level of you as human is still you. And this is a big thing that starseeds, that label like to step, separate from. They like to go, well, I'm not human. Well, my love, yes, you are. You designed this body. You dropped an extension of self into this body. And yes, you may be running an avatar from um, kind of a higher self. So I imagine it like this. If I take my hand and this is Caitlin the human, this is me right now in this lifetime, I also have Caitlin the Essasani and Caitlin in an Andromedan form and Caitlin in Sayelitu, the Nordic or the Tegetan Pleiadian and Caitlin who's over here running this timeline, right? So we have these extensions running in these parallel realities, but they are all me. And so when we decided we were going to come to earth and we were going to have this human experience and we were going to play with the 12 dimensions of reality that are programmed into this human body, we designed a system to be able to come and play in the sandbox with other beings, a similar avatar. And so our natal charts, this is what, it drives me nuts. I have not yet seen an accurate one to date. And believe me, you guys should, somebody volunteer to look after my email inbox and my messenger, please. I've seen a lot. I have not seen an accurate one to date of somebody being able to track starseed lineage through an astrological chart. Not once. And that, like, it, it drives me a little bit crazy because what happens is that we have these people who are going out and saying to you, well, you have this marker in Arcturus and it's at this degree, so that means you're an Arcturian starseed. Does it? Have you tracked that? Can you actually find your parallel level of you as that? Because if you can't, it doesn't exist. Right? So I think it's the wrong way to look at all of this. I don't think identity is the thing to chase first. I think finding the happy and the play and where we feel most purposeful is the thing to find first. Because through that, all of the downloads start to come in, all of the threads start to interweave and crisscross. And we start to have information and people cross our paths. Like Colby had a download about being here to be a part of the shift, but did he know he was a driver before he met me? Maybe not, but that's another download he now has. Did I know that Colby was a part of the shift and that there was a big key I was gonna be needing from some of the astrological stuff we've talked about? No, but we designed it so that we would cross paths in our humanity. So what I would love for you guys to look at as maybe an experience is everywhere that you've been looking at, I really wanna know what I am, why? What is it going to do for you? Or what do you perceive it's going to do for you? And if you weren't going to focus on that anymore, and you were going to start focusing on what actually lights me up, where do I feel most helpful? Where do I feel like I'm the most purposeful? What gives me joy? I would love for you guys to just compare, contrast, play with that a little bit, because I think it's going to give you some really interesting levels of awareness that will make this so much easier. Um, Colby, I, I can hear a thought. Spit it out. <laughs> uh, I was just, I was sort of just agreeing with you. Um, there's just, there's certain things, certain programming that we have where, you know, it's kind of like we're just taught that, that life is so painful and we have to work so hard and all of that. And that's sort of what we're breaking out of now. Like, 
you yeah. don't have to find such a logical context on how you're you're supposed to work exactly mm -hmm. because we need to work towards things that actually feel good and that's where a lot of you know when it comes to money and all that we're back at that again it's going to find what lights you on fire like that's what you need to be looking at not what pays your bills look at what really lights you up and just double down on it you know because what odds are whatever stopping you from doing that it's it's probably about to get the axe with pluto and venus conjunct like if you're compromising your self values right now for monetary things it's probably going to get chopped and then you're going to just have to deal with <laughs> like the the more level of uncertainty in what it is that you're going to do and how it's going to monetize and all of that and it's a lot easier if you can just focus on that now and not really worry so much about how things monetize and all of this and just really focus on like what feels good to do like it how we just want to leave the world better than we found it. It's really the, it's another key to that too. But whatever it is that you do that feels good is consequently going to do that. So, And to be clear, this is an action word, right? We are creating what we want. Mm. Okay. I want to talk to you about this, Colby. I just, and listening to that podcast too, I keep this particular person in my back pocket. He's one of my favorite humans to listen to. Um, has nothing to do with spirituality <laughs> randomly. He's actually um, like a business mentor of all things. But the way he- Gary Vanderchuk? No, um, no. James <laughs> Wedmore. <laughs> okay. um, so anyways, where was I going this? Right. A lot of people wait for the damn door to get opened for them. They're waiting for the universe to deliver something on a silver platter. They're waiting for their guides to give them the next sig signal to go. They're waiting for this proverbial wait. And what we don't realize is that being human is also an action word. We didn't come here in passivity. And this is a big thing that mainstream meta, I think, is doing a huge disservice to the people that are here because we stop ourselves from moving forward because we think we are missing a key. We think we are missing information. But the truth of the matter is we don't get the next level until we put in motion what we already have. And I'm sure you see this all the time with the work you do. It's like people sometimes will get the information from the natal charts, I'm sure, and then they don't put it into action. And the next time you talk to them, they're in deeper levels of resistance. Do you get that? A lot. Yeah, A it's lot. huge. I get it in my work too. People have been, they have the key right there, but they don't walk through their own door because it's not arriving in a way that they thought it should. They think it's supposed to be maybe necessarily easier or more comfortable, or it should just flow. But oh my gosh, you guys, sometimes we just have to stand up and go take and create our opportunity. You know, sometimes we have to be the one that says, you know what, I chose this 3D embodiment here. I chose to be an alchemist with my nature, with my system, with the world around me. And we have to go and build it. And so passivity is not your friend, especially now not in going to chase what you love, not in having the new jobs or careers arrive, not in designing the business you want to have. Passivity is the killer for your intuition as well. We learn best in motion and play. You're more ready than you think you are. Yeah. It's really all I have to say, because that, like I was saying, that was one of the things that kept holding me back. And it, it kind of all comes back to that same thing about really having confidence because that was sort of the issue that I had in the beginning was that I wasn't really confident in what I was doing. And, you know, all of that comes from just childhood, basically, of like, I remember I had a very specific experience when I was in school which I won't turn this into a 20 minute story, 
but I was in school and we were talking about like, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up? And this was sixth grade. I remember it very detailed. Sixth grade, I was 12 years old and I had a student teacher that was kind of like walking around talking to everyone. And we had these little papers about career paths and this and that. And I was like, I just want to play music. And she's like, huh. You, yeah, right. It's a, it's a cool hobby, but you need to get a real job, you know? And I'm like, oh. you know, my little dreams were crushed, you know? And so I had this mentality for my whole life that like, that was impossible because I wasn't going to be good enough. I, there was one in a million chance and it couldn't be me. So it was like I had this really cynical outlook on life and then spiraled into drug addiction and it was just horrible. And I and I don't blame it all on that moment, but it, that, that moment is one that, that often comes up when I'm trying to do, you know, like trauma healing is I that that moment stuck with me so hard that she told me that, you know, I couldn't do that. And she didn't even know, like, I, I started playing guitar when I was like eight. And I was a straight up prodigy. Like she had no idea who she was talking to. And, you know, I mean, for those that don't know, I mean, it's kind of been on hold for now, but I mean, that's, that's what I do outside of astrology is I'm a musician and it was, it was looking very, very successful at the end of 2019. Like we were getting ready to go on a really decent tour and, everything that was about the launch in March, of course. And then it was just, yeah, just nope. There was more work to be done. I needed to get this thing rolling, you know, yeah. more people to help. So yeah, that's that story. <sighs> Man, what, I was going to say, you just was, gave me so much fuel. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> what, um, what, what else was it that we were going to talk? Walk-ins. Oh, uh. Yeah. That that's why that just triggered in my head. So do we do we want to go down that road right now? Okay, well, okay, you start me off. What's what's the thought going in your head? Because I walk-ins is one of my ninja skills and specialties. So a lot of people just talk about one type of walk-in. There's actually seven. Um that we oh, wow. Yeah, that we deal with. And they can wreak a lot of havoc in a human body, but they can also do a whole lot of good. Okay, what's triggering your mind? What do you what do you want to I just had, I had a, um, I think it was what, whenever you had brought that up on your last live and I had said something about when I died before and, and, um, Oh yeah. Like doing a soul switch. Oh, Kate, this is what I was on about. Thank you. You just triggered the whole trajectory of that conversation. So, um, we were talking about that part when, in about 2016, 2017, you and I both had cataclysmic wake up calls. And we had like these soul deaths of everything we thought we were to step into everything that we actually are. Yo, it just hit me. That's what happened. That's what I got my original soul back. Holy. Sh okay. Okay. No, wait, wait, wait. No, let me know. Okay. <laughs> Whoa. Kind of. Whoa. Ooh, here we go. Yeah. Fun times in the zoo, you guys. <laughs> hey, Colby, you want to, you want to clear your original occupant right now? Do do I want to what? Do you wanna do you wanna cross over your original occupant right now? I don't I don't know what that is. Okay, let's talk about it. He's like, oh my god, just had like. Can, can I tell the story first? Okay, it's story time with Colby. Go. <laughs> okay, so it was 2011, 2012 ish, and I was really strung out on drugs, and I actually I watched Surviving Death on Netflix recently. And that show freaks me out because it was the same experience that I had. So, okay, so I overdosed. We won't go into details, but, um, yeah, I had a really bad overdose. And I don't know, know that I flatlined, but I know I flatlined at the same time. And what happened was there was a girl it, that I went to high school with that died whenever... I was, we were like 16, she died in a car accident. And a, a little bit prior to this, I was finding myself communicating with her. And that was kind of like the opening to my awakening. 
And what happened was I overdosed. And when I did, I saw her. It was like I was in a nightclub and I was moving through this crowd of people is sort of what it felt like. And I see her and I walk over to her and I ask, I was like, what are you doing here? And she was like, no way. Like, what are you doing here? And I was like, I don't know. You you died. Like, what are you doing here? And then she looked over and there was like these other people standing off to the side, kind of looking over at us and talking amongst themselves. And I could kind of tell they were communicating. And she was like, no, you can't be here yet. You have to go back. And I was like, oh, I want to cry every time I tell this story. I was like, I don't want to go back. Like, I'm done with that place. Like, don't make me go back. And she was like, I know it sucks right now, but it's not going to be that way. Just go back. And um, so I went back and then I ended up, I ended up getting sober, not directly after. It was a bunch of other synchronistic events. I accidentally got sober, funny enough. Um, and then I had my five-year identity crisis. So it's really, it was almost like something else stepped in for me to kind of like get me together. And then I was like on a bunch of steroids, like it was a mess. But anyways, so then come... 2016 2017 when i had that experience it was almost like they downloaded me with the part of my old self because in that time period i also quit playing music like i had given up on that because me and the band i was playing with we were on drugs so then it was like and then now i kind of like let all all of that go and i'm playing music again and it's like I returned back to my like self before without being strung out on drugs and dying. So yeah, that's that's my my story on that. You ready? Can we yeah. do this? Can we do this thing? I suppose. What what okay. are we doing? Okay. So let's let's <laughs> talk about this first. So sometimes what happens when there are starseeds that choose to come into a family line. We might come in because we're here to do something called ancestral clearing work. And in Colby's case, he came into a family line where he does have that agreement in place. But instead of coming in with another soul in his body, which we would call the original occupant soul. So an original occupant, an OO is what we call them, is it's the one that was supposed to be chronologically born to his family okay and so with an original occupant they have all of the akashic records the karmic loops the reincarnational information the drama the trauma the pain and so i asked colby a question earlier today i said to him you know are the feelings that you experience because i asked him about the vaping i said are the feelings you experience even yours and he was like no i don't think so they're not coming from him because the habits aren't his. Colby is like one of the most vibrant, chill starseeds I've ever met in my life. He doesn't have addictions. Colby, the being we're talking to right now, <clears throat> his little friend is coming up and up. Um, Colby, the being we're talking to right now, doesn't have those problems, but the original occupant did because of the life they were locked into. But what happens is because that original occupant is like on a groundhog day, they can't get off of that cycle until we clear it. So sometimes the starseed, the one who has walked in, will experience the timelines of the other one to have them wake up and go, I need to change this. Life has to be different. I can't go through this. And they'll keep triggering wake up moments into their life, which coincidentally are written into their astrological natal charts. You can track the entire thing, super interestingly enough. So with these original occupants, there comes a time when we have completed the work. And I told Colby earlier today, I was like, dude, you're kind of done with that. Like, let's put this down. You need to be absolutely radiant and on your A game <laughs> for this year. And his original occupant is done. Like the Akashic records are cleared. Colby has learned all the lessons from it and sent it back through the ancestral line. And now that's all that's left is to unplug it and cross it over. That's it. Super easy. 
So Colby, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I'm picking up in my body and I want you to just let me know what you've got. So what's happening is I have started to tap into him and his story, the back of my neck, like right at my occiput, top of my head here, I'm getting like this pressure vice headache. Like um, it doesn't feel like a head headache. It feels just like a pressure container. I'm getting like a shortness in my lungs. Like I can't take the air all the way to the bottom. And then behind my shoulders, my upper to mid back, I just want to stretch it. The other thing I'm feeling is, and I could be mirroring, so I could be opposite side to where you have this, but my right shoulder feels tired compared to my left. Like I feel like it won't move. Do you experience that in your shoulders? Like, do you get numbness, carpal tunnel? Like, Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Okay. So your original occupant has a hook in on C4 on the right side of your neck, which is what's causing the arm issue. And it's also hooked in just underneath your diaphragm and under the back side of your stomach is where it's sitting. And so I would also wager a guess that there are some foods that are not settled with you that sometimes like, you don't yeah. have to admit to this on camera, but I would Im <laughs> imagine that you would have like gassiness, things like that going on. Um, the other thing I'm getting is like a little bit of a, like my belly feels hollow. Does food even satisfy you? Not, not recently. My appetite has been so screwed up recently. And I feel like that has a lot to do with it is yes. just some weird, like, I, I feel like it, it's sort of like my body doesn't want to tolerate a whole lot of BS. So there's there's that of course because those cravings aren't yours the things that you were putting in belong to the original occupant because they were numbing substances right yeah yeah okay my, my body just kind of wants to react negatively to almost everything which it's it's hard in this society but yes. it is what it is <laughs> okay so what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to come into your field and we're going to hook you back up into your full source point. I'm truth. Ooh, this is fun. So Colby is the same source point as me. So I'm going to come in and just completely show that off to you. And what I want you to do is allow your body to just completely settle into that frequency. You're already coming on board. You can feel it. Yeah. Yes. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to ask the original occupant to step forward and we are going to give gratitude for the ride into this earth plane, but we are also going to thank them for all of the learning and the rebounds because all of that gave you fuel to be able to be a better servant here to humanity, right? If you and I didn't go through adversity, we'd be really shitty healers. We wouldn't have stories to tell. We wouldn't have the ways to relate. So we're just going to send that gratitude piece through. Good. Okay. So the next thing we're going to go through and unhook all of the little pieces of tech and places it's hooked in, in your body. Your mom is also stepping forward and asking for help too. So we're actually going to clear this original occupant up and through her. So if you could imagine her stepping into our space with us, it's like we're letting her birth this baby backwards back to source. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to ask you for one more visual to get this done. I want you to imagine the Milky Way galaxy out in front of you. And from your third eye, I would like for you to put a big, long bridge, a pathway from you out to the center of the Milky Way. And we're going to bring this being all the way up onto this path. And we're going to walk him home. And it may feel like you are walking, 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 almost like a, a bungee cord is stretching or a, a positive tension is coming off of your body. And when you feel like you're far enough and you've extended your gratitude and you can say, I love you and bye, you'll feel that just bounce back and you'll just be centered in your system. Okay, and then can you give your head and neck a really good stretch and your back a really good twist? It might even crack. 
Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, what can I, I felt, say except you're welcome? <laughs> yeah, I felt, I felt all of that. Yeah, good. Okay, and so then we're just going to do a quick um, reset on the entire body. So I'm just going to reset your craniosacral. You are going to detox. Okay, you are going to detox. This is really important. So make sure you're eating really cleanly. <laughs> should, I, should I just fast today? It is a full um, moon. You could, but I actually think like if you were going to eat maybe like broth-based soups, smoothies type things would still be okay. Like I think you actually need some of the blood sugars and the carbs to process. Okay. Yeah, I don't want you to go just straight water. Yeah. Hey, how does your body feel now? Very, very tingly. Mm. Very tingly. I feel like I'm floating away. So I'm holding on to this, trying to stay grounded, trying to come back to earth right now. <laughs> How you feel is what it feels like to be hooked up to your source point at all times, to be on. So what if you are actually grounded, but grounded isn't as heavy as you thought it was. It makes a lot of sense. Mm, so it does. Awesome. Yeah. This is magical. <laughs> and what if we could now go run the electromagnetic imprinting shut off to turn off all cravings and or desire to even put the vape in your mouth? I feel like you've been like standing beside me because I've, I've started to reach for it and it's like I can feel you like stop it stop it like every time now. <laughs> <laughs> oh it's great we okay. can go ahead and if, like, if you want to do that we can we can run it you know it, like, it's not me it's got to be you I can't do anything unless you're already in it okay it's got to be your readiness I'm ready all right. Okay. So we're going to run BMM and then we'll shift the system and then I'll straighten your craniosacral. Okay. So while we're doing that, let me, I can multitask. I can finish up what we were doing here and circle back on this conversation. I know. Doesn't his face look different? The swelling has come down. He's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, Violet's just sharing. She said, I quit smoking in one session with Caitlin too. Yeah, it's so easy, you guys. Um, we make this so goddamn difficult and people make healing into this long drawn out process and it doesn't have to be. If you're willing, we can get it done in like what that just took us 10 minutes. Yep. We have made so many lies out of what healing and metaphysics is and we can do huge quantum leaps if we let ourselves so i'm really excited to share everything that's coming up in the accelerated with you guys and beyond i've got a bunch of students that are stepping into this work as well so it's not just me that can do this anymore i've got a bunch of my students apprenticing and being able to transfer it because as soon as i have the codes mastered i can pass it to somebody else and something super interesting, now that Colby is on his axis and hooked back into his source field, when he goes and works with clients, they're automatically going to do it too. They'll shift on to theirs while he's in their presence. And they could hold it. They might not, but most of them will. Okay, so let's just circle back to what I would love for you guys to take out of today in terms of the next couple of weeks. I would really love for you to be considering how you can get a little more naked. We've been doing this already in Healers Rising. Um, how you can get to that place where you need a little less identity and a little more flow. I would love for you guys to be considering where that drive to have a title comes from. I would love for you to be considering why if this um, applies to you, you are still in uncomfortable situations. And if you are, Universal asks, like, hey, universe, what's it going to take for me to wake up today absolutely inspired and ready to rock? Universe, what would it feel like to know that I am a helper every single day of my life? Universe, what would it feel like to be in absolute bliss today? I would love for you guys just to play with that energy, try it on, start bringing in yourself into that space of happiness as your baseline energy. 
It doesn't mean experiencing sadness or Colby's totally resetting, um, experiencing sadness or anger or man is bad. That's not what it is. It's how fast can you experience it, process it, play with it, use it for what it is and bounce back to a baseline that actually feels good. That's what I want to work on. Okay, Colt. <laughs> I was up? just, I was just looking at Mercury retrograde. So oh. that's about to be a thing. That's about to be a thing, but it's a good time for it because it's really Mercury retrograde only really goes wrong in, in the right ways essentially is is how it works it's because when mercury goes retrograde you should really be doing more of like internal stuff instead of trying to trudge forward with your thought process it's more about like reassessing everything so yeah um, that kind of just confirms what you were saying yes i love that maybe Colby, um we could work on like a small little like energy update right up for the Mercury retrograde, kind of what's coming, just to encapsulate what we talked about today so that we can put it in a written form. You know, I can even jot note it from you and you can approve it because I'll probably go change it. Can you just crack your neck one more time? I think I got the last adjustment there. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, thank you. Mm. <laughs> I feel like I got wings. Hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, you guys, let's wrap it up for today. We went in all sorts of different directions. I knew that was going to happen today. I knew Colby and I weren't going to stay on one topic. It was going to be impossible just with the energy at hand. Keep letting us know if you guys have questions about what we went through. And if you guys have something you want covered in another conversation between the two of us, let us know. We're happy to jump back on live. Colby, can I tell you how many people we're watching now today? Yes. 128. All right. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I Here. thought it was going to be like a record breaking number. No, it, usually we see around the 128s and then the replays we end up getting like up into the thousands, but you're good. Yeah. You're good. It's okay. all downhill for me. We're, we're good now. <laughs> Okay, my loves, we will see you all next time. Have an amazing rest of your full moon day, and I will see you guys all next week. Adios.